Guitars are a worldwide fascination, from the young to the old, to places all over the globe. It has propelled many to achieve success in the music industry. But how did this simple instrument create such a global impact and influence? Through current pop culture and television, the guitar has been closely associated with its electric counterpart. However, in country, its roots stretch across the earth. In this video, I'll be discussing the brief history and evolution of the guitar. Even though the guitar is commonly associated with Western culture, there have been many influences across the globe that led to its formation. The modern word guitar can be traced back to ancient Greek culture and religion. The guitarra, which is a Spanish term for guitar, was derived from the Latin word chitara. The Latin word derived from the Greek word kitara. The kitara was the largest and most impressive of the Greek instruments. The origin of the word kitara dates back to the Greek gods Hermes and Apollo. The kitara was a variation of an earlier Greek instrument called lyre, which resembled the harp. Hermes was the son of Zeus and Maia. From his birth, he exhibited a faculty for cunning and dissimulation. After his birth, he creeped stealthily out of the cave in which he was born to steal some oxen belonging to his brother Apollo. Along the way, he found a tortoise, which he killed and stretched seven strings across his empty shell, inventing a lyre. While undergoing a trial after being caught for stealing oxen, he happened to strum the strings of his instrument, instantly catching the attention of Apollo. As Apollo's desire to possess the instrument grew rapidly, he gladly offered the oxen in exchange. As a result, currently, the lyre is closely associated with Apollo. Even though there have been many similar string instruments across the globe, historians often link the Arabic oud to be the closest ancestor to the modern guitar. The ten-stringed Arabic oud was brought into the northern Mediterranean coast by the Moors. The Moors were inhabitants from northern and west Africa. The Arabic musician Mansur Zalzal adopted the Persian instrument barbat and modified it, thus creating the oud. The barbat was originally fretless with a sound box constructed of thin staves of wood. The oud could be both played with a pick or a slide. Eventually, the Arabic oud was refined by having frets added to its neck, giving birth to the modern lute. The lute is similar in build to the present-day guitar. Though it does not have a sound hole, a soundboard existed. The soundboard was often crafted in decorative patterns directly out of the wood. The strings, however, were made out of animal guts, often from the intestine of sheep. By the 11th century, Muslim Iberia had become a center for the manufacture of instruments. These goods spread eventually to province, influencing French Trabados and Tuves, and eventually reaching the rest of Europe. Over time, changes were made to the lute. By the end of the Renaissance era, the number of strings had grown to 10, and during the Baroque era, it continued to 14, and even at times 19 strings. Along with this, the structure and bodywork of the lute continued to change as well. Most of these improvements were made in Europe. Some early examples of the influence of the lute in European culture includes the Palatine Chapel in Italy. The lute is depicted on one of the ceiling paintings. The lute also found its way into Germany. Early written records confirm the existence of several families making lutes as a trade in and around Fussen, Clerk Valley. Many famous names of 16th and 17th century lute makers originated from around this small area of southern Germany. It can also be noted that sometime during the Renaissance era in the 16th century, the Spanish vihuela was created. It featured a flat back as compared to its counterpart, which had a curved back. Moreover, it usually had five or six double strings, usually 10 to 12 strings. The vihuela, however, was short-lived and soon faded away towards the end of the 16th century. The Baroque guitar soon replaced the Renaissance lute and Spanish vihuela, developed sometime between 1600 to 1750. It was only during the Classical and Romance era that six single core string guitars began to emerge. Though earlier, in 1774, 
a five-string guitar was built by Italian-born Ferdinando Gagliano. In 1779, a single-core six-string guitar was built by Italian-born Gaetano Pinatia. However, the defining moment came when Spanish luthier Antonio Torres made significant changes to the guitar. Majority of the classical guitar nowadays are based off his initial design. He enlarged the body of the guitar and introduced a fan-style brazing sometime around 1850. As a result, the guitar's tone got enhanced and its volume increased. It should be noted that most guitars that were manufactured during this era had changed to nylon strings. Sometime in the same era, a German played a huge part in guitar history. Born in 1796 into a family of violin, cabinet, and guitar makers, Christian Frederick Martin soon decided to follow in the footsteps of his family. After migrating to the United States in 1833, he set up a shop at 196 Hudson Street on the Lower West Side in New York City. Martin's first workshop was a forerunner of the present-day C.F. Martin & Company, which is still family-owned and operated by his great-great-great-grandson, C.F. Martin IV. What made his guitars unique was that he invented the x brace design. It was due to this design that the body could handle the increased tension from steel strings. Before the 1800s, guitars only had classical strings, often made from animal guts. These strings were incapable of producing loud sounds, so Martin sought out to fix that, and in the process, creating now what is known as acoustic guitar. C.F. Martin laid the foundation and soon after, hundreds of guitar companies throughout the United States started to emerge. As years passed, sometime in the early 1930s, musicians and guitar makers started to experiment with amplifying the sound of the guitars. In 1931, the first electric steel string guitar, the frying pan, was made and commercially marketed by George Beauchamp from the now famous Rickenbacker Company. Unlike the acoustic guitar, this electric guitar featured a unique horseshoe magnet set below the strings, which picked up the vibration of the strings. It also had an output jack, which had to be connected to an amplifier. Other variations were made progressively by both Rickenbacker and other guitar companies. Overall, since the beginning of the early guitar, many have dedicated themselves to playing and crafting this instrument. Initially, the strumming and picking of the instrument influenced others, and currently, the way it is being played has not changed and is still influencing many in learning how to play it. Thank you very much for watching this video.